Welcome back to Backstage Pass Rock News. We've got a legendary drummer in the house today, Mr. Chris Slade. Chris sat down with our very own Paul Stephenson for a deep dive into his incredible career. From playing with rock royalty like David Gilmour and Jimmy Page, to his time behind the kit for ACDC, where he was literally drummer 100 in his audition for the band. I did an audition. Uh, they told me after that I was number 100. Oh, wow. <laughs> they told me after. They didn't tell me before that I would have been... And they were all top drummers all around the world. So they held auditions in America and in Britain. Um, and they, people would... Drummers would ring up and say, look, don't tell my band, but I really want to try out with you guys. Because uh, everybody wanted to be in ACDC. Honestly, I know it sounds a bit strange now, but they did. People were queuing up yeah, of course. to join the band in whatever capacity. Um, and they were the big, and still are, one of the biggest bands in the world, you know. They certainly put on a show, a great show, which is what they're doing right now, actually. Yep. And I, I know the drummer they got now. I used to know him in California when I lived in California. And uh, I knew that uh, he would do a great job for ACDC. And people took that the wrong way. They said, oh, he's bitter. He's bitter. Listen to what he's saying. And I was saying, well, I know Matt. I know he's going to be great. That's all I was saying. <laughs> and it's like, uh, well, listen how bitter he is about that. And I wasn't bitter at all. I was very pleased for Matt, actually. Because uh, he was with Alanis Morissette originally. And, you know, I know he's a good player. He's a studio player. And he'll do everything that Angus wants him to do. If he wants him to channel Phil Rudd, he will. The same as I did. Channel, I say, to the trolls. Channel. In other words, try to play like Phil Rudd. Um, and keep the, the kick drum as simple as you possibly can, which is what Phil does. Um, so, you know, the first time around, I didn't have to channel so much, but the second time around, I did. Um, so, you know, again, it's just getting on with people and doing the job. Chris explains what it's like to play in front of one million screaming fans in Russia and how Angus Young's work ethic is unmatched, even when he's under the weather. Plus, we get the hilarious story of a fan who told Angus that all ACDC albums sound the same. Uh, the crowd just went over the horizon. It was in a, a, an unused airfield in the middle of Moscow. And it was a free show, so you can imagine. Uh, and there was over a million people there. CNN counted, or at least estimated, they had a hot air balloon above the field. And CNN um, estimated there to be over a million people. So, uh, you know, that was awesome to say the least. And they, they had, the PA was staggered all the way along the crowd as it went deeper and deeper, further and further away. So that everybody got the same sound um, when it was happening and not a delay, you know? And it was fantastic. Uh, well, ACDC is always fantastic, in fact. Uh, they never have a bad show. Um, and it's always exciting. And Angus is always on top form, even when, he's, when he feels uh, awful, you know? I've seen him do it with cold and everything you know um yeah. but he always stumps up yeah. he's always the guy in the schoolboy suit you know playing guitar and uh it's great and the band is great uh to be and they've stuck to their guns they always play their style uh right at the beginning you know they some people might think oh we've got to do something different I think uh, a journalist said to Angus once, I was there, he said, uh, what do you say to people who say you 
you've done 20 albums and they all sound the same. Angus said, that is just, that's terrible of you to say that. That is just awful. I mean, uh, you know, 20 albums, they all sound the same. He said, we've done 21 albums and they all sound the same. <laughs> it's knowing what you do, doing it right, and the people love it. So why not? And Malcolm Young being one of the best rock rhythm guitarists ever. And of course, we couldn't let Chris go without talking about that drum intro. The one that's become synonymous with rock anthems everywhere, Thunder. Chris also shares his thoughts on how Axl Rose stepped up to fill Brian Johnson's shoes when he was facing vocal issues, keeping ACDC's rock spirit alive. They were great. Malcolm was the backbone uh, because he was the engine room. He was a genius at rhythm guitar. Um, and I mean that. I've played with many rhythm guitarists. I mean rhythm guitarists. And he specialized in rhythm. He was a great player, actually, soloing also. But he, uh, his rhythm was impeccable. I've never seen anything like it. Uh, his timing, he never missed a beat. He was always on time, exactly on time, like a drummer. And he made my job so easy because all you do is follow Malcolm. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good to me. Um, Thunderstruck, we've got to mention it. You've got it on your new record as well. It's a huge song. Again, one of the band's highlights to this very day um, of the album, The Razor's Edge, that you did. It's a song that you guys obviously play as well with the timeline. So is, why is that song that you hold so dear? I mean, what is it about that track itself? You've got to do Thunderstruck. It's iconic. Um, it's such a great song and such a great arrangement. You can't change that. Um, and people, I mean, punters, the crowd, the people who pay to come and see you, want, they want Back in Black and they want Thunderstruck. <laughs> um, anything else is, uh, you know, is welcome, but you've got to do those two songs. Um, and they're just so iconic. Um, we didn't, I didn't know anyway, I don't know whether the guys knew, um, when we did Thunderstruck, that uh, it was going to do as well as it did. I think you always hope, you know. And uh, our record company, Brave Words Records, wanted some ACDC on it. I said, are you sure? Because all you get is detractors going, well, it's not as good as ACDC. Even if it was 10 times better, which is probably impossible, but even if it was, uh, the trolls would be all over it saying, who does he think he is? Who do they think they are playing this? And it's terrible anyway. They're going to say that, you know. Um, but I'm very proud of it, actually. And just to finish yeah. off, just uh, one last question about your time with, with ACDC. Um, Brian left the band for a short period and was replaced by Axel Rose from Guns N' Roses, famously. And um, what happened there? Because on the outside, it seems a bit of a, a, a strange mix, perhaps, with Axel and, and ACDC. So how was it within the band? It was great. He turned out to be a great guy, telling jokes, telling stories, all sorts of, you know. And he took it very seriously. He used to warm up for two hours every night before the concert and warmed down for one hour. And I know that because I was in the room next to him. <laughs> so it's like, oh, Axel's off again. There you go. <laughs> and he, you know, I'd heard all the horror stories. Um, of course, haven't we all? Uh, but he turned out to be, I shook his hand and thought, this guy's all right. Strangely, why do I think that? And then he started singing. He was like, wow, this guy has a voice. I didn't know he had that voice. I'd only ever heard him sing Guns N' Roses. Um, but that voice that he has, that instrument he has, is just phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Now, he's not Brian Johnson. He wasn't even trying to be Brian Johnson. Again, the trolls are going, you know, oh, well, you know, he's not Brian. You know, he can't, nobody can be Brian. Brian is Brian and he has his own voice and it's unique. And that's the way it goes. Uh, 
Axel had a different approach. And that's all. I'm not saying one is better than the other because music is not a competition. Uh, but journalists always try to put words in my mouth. I said uh, in an interview once that I heard the band better with my in-ear monitors than I've ever heard um, any band before in my life. And they wrote down, then they made the headlines. Oh, Slade thinks that uh, Axel is better than Brian. He can... He, he, it sounds better with Axel, you know, journalists, just to get headlines, you know. And it's not what I said at all. I was talking about my in-ear monitors. Um, so, you know, I was a bit wary of journalists, aren't I? So, <laughs> you should uh... be. <laughs> <laughs> Stick around for the full interview, folks. You won't want to miss Chris Slade's stories from behind the drum throne of some of rock's biggest bands. Until next time, Rock Rebels, keep rocking and stay tuned for more Backstage Pass Rock news. And remember, live life loud.